is Steve Reese. I am uh, presenting a simple blog at the Azure Cosmos DB conference for you. Uh, you can find me at stevesdevbox.com and, and uh, find me on Twitter at stevesdevbox. I also have my business site at Scrumfish, where if you have any questions about what I present, uh, you can fill out a form to contact me and I will be able to get back to you. You can also find the code that we're going to see today at my GitHub on Scrumfish. Um, I have, about me a little bit, I have been doing software work for over 30 years. I'm the owner of Scrumfish Software LLC. Uh, I also work for a major security appliance company. I've been using .NET since .NET 1, and I've been using Azure since they launched. And uh, I love the technologies. Uh, I enjoy being in it, and that's why I'm doing this conference. And I also love training developers, and I am... I would be interested in training your developers if that's something you need, as well as helping you with other IT needs. The problem domain that we're going to look at today is I want to blog. I also want to code, and I want to blog about my code. And that is the problem we're going to be solving. We're going to be looking specifically at the data access and how Cosmos DB relates to that. We have multiple storage options for storing blog data. We can put it in Azure SQL. We can put it in blob storage since it is obviously going to be like an HTML file with the final blog in it, or we can put it in Cosmos DB. Of course, we're going to be putting in Cosmos DB for this, and so you might ask, why Cosmos DB? Well, I'm glad you asked. The blog data is not relational, and so it's not a good match for Azure SQL, nor is it a good match for any other SQL database, whether you're using Postgres or MySQL. Blog data is more than just a single blog blob. Um, if you store it in blob storage, you're only storing the HTML, but you don't have a title. You don't have the author if you have multiple bloggers on your site, uh, things like that. So that's why I don't want to put it in, in blob storage, although we will use blob storage today to store the images that are embedded in the uh, blog. Um, the Cosmos DB gives us optimized sorting, so we can sort on dates and, and uh, present things with efficiency. It also is very optimized at returning subsets of our data so that when we want to do a preview, like for a list of blogs and maybe a fragment, uh, we don't have to pull the whole blog all the time just to give a list. And so we'll see that in the code today. So the first thing you'll want to do is run in, uh, install and run the Cosmos DB emulator. And you can find that from Microsoft. We're not going to run through the install in this session. But uh, if you search for it on Bing or Google, you will find it there. Just make sure when you download it, you're actually downloading it from Microsoft's site and not some other site. And then you run the emulator to set up everything and uh, create some containers and two collections. So let's take a look at that. Uh, when you run the emulator, you're going to get this page right here. It's going to pop up in your browser automatically. And a couple of in, important pieces of information are here. The URI that you're going to connect to when you talk to Cosmos, the key for connecting is here, and you also have connection strings if you want to use those. We'll be using the URI and the primary key uh, rather than the connection strings. So in the Explorer, if you click into there, we're gonna what we're going to do is we're going to add a new container, and we want to put it in the new database for our blog. So we're gonna just going to call it blog example. We're going to auto scale. And that auto scales from 400 to 4,000 RUs. An RU is essentially the currency of purchasing resources in Azure. And it's a mix of your IOPS. It's a mix of uh, your memory and your CPU. And just by example, if you were to pull one kilobyte of data out of Cosmos DB, that would be approximately one RU of spend. So that kind of gives you a general idea of what you're looking at. And uh, when you're setting it up, these are going to be the same defaults in Azure and you can adjust those according to what your needs are and your spend budget is. So let's go in here. We're going to create a container called blogs. That's where our blogs are going to go. I'm going to partition it off the ID. The partition key is important because if you have a lot of similar data for your partition key, then when it partitions the data across the cluster, uh, one particular partition could get overloaded. My keys are highly unique, so it should distribute very evenly across the partitions. Once that's created, we're going to come in here and we're going to create, and you can see the, the thing, we're going to create one more container. And that's going to be for users because we, we're going to log in to, uh, to actually add and delete blogs so that just any old user can't. 
So to take a look at how it looks in there, I got one already set up. And so we're going to look at that and we're going to look at the blogs. And I'm going to pull a blog up that I already input. And we're going to look at a couple of items here inside the browser. And that is we got images. And I stored this. We're going to see how that comes into play. What I want to do is if I delete a blog, I want to make sure I clean up those images out of my blob storage so that I'm not just expanding my blob storage and spending more and more on stuff that I don't need to be there. And we'll see how that works. I have the ID that I generate. Um, I don't use GUIDs for this because I use the ID in the URL. And there could be some debate about whether or not you should use a, uh, an ID in the URL, but, but that's what I'm doing. And um, I got my title. I got the actual HTML for the article. And then I got a fragment that I'm using for previewing the data. And then I just store publish that date so I can sort it to the most recent on top if I want to. And then there's some housekeeping that Azure or, uh, Cosmos DB puts in there. If we go to the users, you'll see that I have a user created for myself with a bcrypt hash. So the project itself, I created a solution. And the project itself has a blog UI that is a React-based, uh, it's an API-based and React front-end. Blog data, which is where we're going to be spending our time. It has an objects project where all of our objects are stored. And then I have some unit tests because I'm very big on test-first development. And you'll always see that in demos that I do. We'll be adding the following, or we did actually already added them, but we've, we'll add the following uh, NuGet packages to do this. You need your Azure storage blobs. I'm going to note that uh, when I ran this with 12.11, it did not work with my storage emulator that I have with Visual Studio 2022. I did have to downgrade to uh, 12.10 to keep my site running. And so I just want you to be aware of that. Um, you can go to the, the latest version that works for you. And we're going to take a quick peek at the storage emulator. It is a command line program. It ships with Visual Studio 2022. If you have earlier versions that don't have the emulator, you can also search for that on Bing or Google and download it and use it. But it'll be off of your Common 7 IDE extensions Microsoft storage emulator folder. It's called Azure Write. Um, I'm specifying a location because I don't want it to go on my uh, boot drive. Um, the nice thing is that you can also specify other locations for other projects if you want to keep things pristine. And uh, real quick, there is, you can download this from Microsoft. And um, and this will let you actually look at the data in your storage emulator. It'll let you create your containers. This is the Microsoft Azure Storage Emulator Explorer. And again, it is available on Microsoft's website to download. And in here is where I created my blog images folder to, uh, to, hand, to, hold, these, to hold these items. So let's move on. So we're going to be mainly in implementing blog data. Insert versus create, or upsert versus create. Do we want to upsert the data every time? Do we want to create new data? So the thing with create is it will fail on a duplicate ID. And this is a good thing for what I'm doing because I'm generating my own IDs, and I'm not a mathematician, so it's possible I create a duplicate. Since I'm creating my own blogs, I would rather fail than stomp on a blog and overwrite existing data. Upsert will update a duplicate ID. And it will also insert on the unique ID. So there's a possibility that if I mingle an ID while I'm updating, I'll get a duplicate blog. But that's pretty unlikely with all my unit tests in place. So we're going to implement the blog data. And there is a special case for delete. We talked about it already. We want to remove all images that are not used by other entries. So if I use an image twice, I want to make sure I'm not deleting the image in the other entry if it has the same file name, because I don't do unique file names by blog with the way I wrote it. Uh, because I didn't want to store uh, the same file twice. Uh, to implement the blog data, we've got to decide, are we going to do asynchronous calls or are we going to work synchronously? That is a question that you got to answer when you're thinking about your design. The advantage of async operations is it can help with the scalability of your website because the thread is immediately released to process the next request that comes in. But I will note that it does not improve the performance of your website because you are still using IOPS, memory, and CPU to perform those operations in the background. And if you're using synchronous on GET, that requires special consideration as you still have to get the data up to the web browser somehow, whether it's WebSocks or you're doing an asynchronous GET operation with the browser. 
Should I worry about injection when I'm using Cosmos DB? Obviously, with SQL, we're always worried about that. And does the same rules apply to Cosmos? And I would say, yes, you do want to worry about injection. So always parameterize your input. So let's see the code. Our blog data has the configuration. That's a Microsoft configuration that gets passed in through dependency injection from the UI code from the main app. And then we also have the image data where we handle our storing and deleting of images. And we'll look at that code in just a moment. And those get injected in. We pull our configuration and we grab our database ID. We grab the key to the database and we grab the URI endpoint. We put those in our project app settings. Again, this is well-known stuff. So it's okay to go in your source code in your source control. And so we just set up our ID. I'm using that example database, the local host. Uh, while I'm here, I'm just going to point out that I also have a connection string for the blob data. I'm telling it to use the development server. That's just a shortcut for the long connection string. Again, safety using your source control. And then I have this thing called a CDN URI. This is what I use to tell the to tell uh, the API how to format the image name so that the browser can actually load it into the browser. And so it'll grab this, append the image name onto the end. And then, of course, I just had the storage name of the blob images. When we, oh, and then one more thing. Um, I have this commented out code. If you want to create a migration, you can create the database in code. You don't have to create it manually like we did. Um, I would not put it here in the constructor because then you're checking for your database on every instantiation. That's not efficient. I would put it in a migration. I did not write a migration for the demo, and so I just put the commented out code here so you can see that, yes, it's available. It runs asynchronously if you want, and uh, you can use it. Just uh, don't put it in your constructor. Same thing here with the ad. We got a uh, we got a little bit of code that just takes an, a, a blog entry that uh, does not have an ID. It just has the basic information. And uh, it uh, adds the fragment. And all my two fragment code does is it parses the HTML, finds the first paragraph, truncates it at a minimum, at a maximum length, and, and writes it back to the fragment. So I don't have the UI creating the, fra the fragment. I have the uh, back end doing that. Put in my publish date so I can sort it by date if I need to. And then I have my UI, uh, my ID generator that if you want to take a look at how I did that, you can download the code and peek in there. And so what we want to do is we need to grab the Cosmos client, which came from that NuGet package. We're passing the URI and that key. It is disposable, so you want to wrap it in the using block, and then we get the container using our database ID that we have listed up there and the name of the collection that we listed in our code. Again, you can create the container on the fly. Um, again, I would not put this in here. I would put this in a migration, but since I don't have a migration, I wanted to show you the code. Um, everything that I did manually in the web browser, you can do in code with a migration with these, uh, with these tools, and you can pass additional information that uh, tells you how many are used. All that stuff is configurable in your code. So really great for migrations. Uh, just don't do it here. Uh, then we're going to create the item async. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and wait. So I'm going to use a, a synchronous call. And the reason I did the synchronous call was when I created this item asynchronously, it returned to my UI so fast that when the UI tried to show me the blog that I just created, it didn't exist yet, and I got a 404. I don't think that will be a problem in production because Azure Cosmos DB is blazing fast, but the emulator, not so much. And so uh, just for my own sanity, I, I did that. And it does make it safe in production because then I don't have to worry about production. And it's only me adding new blogs, so I don't care about the lag. Uh, I don't notice it and uh, when I'm in production and working on Steve's dev box. Next, we want to get titles. And the titles, we're doing a special case because I want to pull those blog entries, but I do not want the HTML. I want this to pull faster than that. And that's a lot of data with those blogs, at least with my blogs. Uh, I write long blogs. So I'm going to go into a different structure called a title. And it's just a subset of what was in the blog data. Uh, as you can see, it's just mis missing the actual blog itself. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, I want to select specifically my ID, my title, my published data, and the fragment. I'm going to get a, what's uh, called a query item iterator, and this will execute that query and return back a stream of data that I can then iterate. It's disposable, so I wrap it in using clause. And the first thing I check is, 
does it have more results? If it comes back and I have nothing in it, it'll fall through and uh, I will end up returning my uh, empty list that I created here. If it has uh, one or more results, then we do the read async. Again, I'm going to make it synchronous because I need to add this stuff to my response. So I'm going to add it in here and I'm going to keep looping until I have all my items. And then I'm just going to return those items back. And then we'll, we're going to see that when we run the blog site. The update blog entry I put in so we can just see what the, up, the upsert looks like. Um, I didn't put this in the blog UI. So if you download the code, that would be a great uh, project for you is to make the uh, blog editable after you post it. Uh, right now on Steve's dev box, when I post a blog, it's set in stone, even the mistakes and all. Uh, so I'll probably be adding that functionality in at some point. But the upsert, again, works very much like your, like your uh, ad. You put in the entry, the partition key, and then I put in a wait because, again, I want it to return before I try to refresh the page for the UI. To get a blog, I did two things. Um, I put in a special case called latest. So if I pass in the idea of latest, then what it will do is it's going to do a, 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 a SQL-like query where it grabs the first blog, all the data, because I'm pulling the blog itself back. And I'm going to order it by the published date, and I'm going to have that descending so that the latest is on top. So I just wanted to show how you can do uh, SQL-like queries with Cosmos DB, not just pull things by their primary key ID. And so, again, we have an iterator that needs to be in a using clause. We iterate through, but since I'm only pulling one, and even if I pull more than one, I only care about the first one. So I'm just checking for a, a non-null result and return the first or default. And if it is an old result, then I return an old there. So, and so it just works. I used to use this in Steve's dev box. I'm not right now, but I left the code in for, for the example and in case I ever want to put it back in. Otherwise, we have a real ID, so we can do uh, the extremely fast read item async that really pulls that data right off that primary partition key. And I wait for the results so that I can send it back. And uh, one thing you might ask is why I'm always waiting, because there's only async operations in your SDK. There are no synchronous oper operations. So if you want it synchronous, you have to force it to synchronous with the .NET framework. Delete is our special case, because we don't want to just go in and delete the blog. We want to clean up images, as long as those images aren't used somewhere else. So what I do is I actually go out and I try to see if the, if the, if the blog is there. And I get it with images, so I get that images array. Um, if it's not there, then I just fall out. It's fine. It didn't exist, so I don't need to delete it. If it does exist and I do have an images list, um, then I'm going to go ahead and iterate all the images in that array, and I'm going to call my function if it, to see if it's in use, passing in my image data. And I'm passing in the container so I don't have to reinstantiate it down here. So it is in use, has the most interesting query. I saved that for last. Um, I'm going to select the count of all the blogs that are not the blog I'm deleting, so I have a not equal to, and where the array contains that file name. And as you can see, I'm using parameters. And so the width parameter passes in the ID and the file name. I run my iterator. Then I just do my uh, query. I'm doing a first or default because I should only get one row back. And if it's uh, greater than zero, then it's being used somewhere else. If it's not greater than zero, it's not being used, and I'm safe to delete the image. If I don't get any results ever, then it returns a false. It's not being used. So again, then I just go to image data and delete the data. And so in image data, the delete is very straightforward. I configure here, pick up that CDN URI, and I'll show you what that's about in a moment. Uh, and so when you delete, we just get the blob client, delete if it exists. We don't care if it doesn't. When we're adding new images, I just pull the extension off to set the content type. If I do not set this content type, it will return as an octet stream and will not display in the UI. And so it's important you do that. This is a real simple version. If you have other people besides yourself posting to your blog, you may want to put in some checks, make sure that the stuff's valid. I know I'm posting JPEGs and PNGs, so I'm OK. So let's see this run. So if we come here to the blog UI, I have a couple of blogs, and I have a blog with images. So you can see that turned out OK. I'm going to put this image in another blog. So I'm going to log in 
to the site because I can only post new blogs if I'm logging in. And I can do a new blog. So I'm just going to type in some data here. I'm going to add an image that is already in there. And it's this one. And that's, see where that CDN came in? That's where I'm using it. When that save returns, it passes the whole thing back here so I can have it in my HTML. And then it displays. Add a little more code or a text. I'm going to add an image that was not and again, that's blog login two. I'm going to add that. Now it's in there. I'm going to post. And this is where it burned me before, uh, where I pulled the uh, the image before the the, synchron the asynchronous operators are done. So now we see we have that in there. So I'm going to go back to my blog UI. We see them all in the list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Postman. Actually, what I need to do is. Uh, get get the uh, get the ID so let's go back in here and let's pull that ID because we're going to delete this so I'm going to go to postman I've already logged in on postman so I don't have to do it right now I'm going to send that request now when I go back to the blog, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back here, and we're just gonna confirm that that image is still there. That image is still there. It only deleted the image that we needed to, and you can always verify that in your image explorer that it deleted correctly. So let's configure this in Azure. You gotta look at what's, what's your goal in Azure. High performance or cost savings, Find your balance. Look at the settings and find the balance to fit your budget to get the performance you want. Um, always check the defaults and adjust things as you need to. Um, whoa, I built something really expensive once in Azure. Uh, with Cosmos DB, uh, uh, back in the day, the default uh, RUs was uh, 10,000. Uh, high performance, high everything. And I didn't know that. I wasn't paying attention. I was working for a pretty small company and I created a Cosmos DB so that we could do some work in there. And it ran all month, and we had a very large bill for our company. And my employers need us to say, we're not happy with me. So the, the moral of that story is, is check your settings and make sure you're, you you know what you're paying for. And the Azure cost calculator that you can just you can give me and search that, there's a cost estimator, and it's great for figuring that stuff out ahead of time and kind of getting an idea where you're at. So let's see the portal. So we're going to come back here. We're going to go into the portal, and um, we're going to create in our resource group, we're going to create our uh, storage account first. And uh, we're going to put it in our resource group that we were just in. I'll call it a conf example. We're we'll going to put it in East. I only need standard. I don't need premium for what I'm doing, and I do not need geo redundant storage. So, again, I'm going to save a little bit of cost here. And then we're going to go through. We're going to check our settings, but everything here is good. Access tier, we're going to be using a CDN, so I want it cool. I don't want to pay for hot. Um, so I'm going to go with cool because the CDN is going to be pulling my images, and that's going to be uh, more performant. On networking, we want it to be public accessible so that the CDN can pull it, or you can pull it directly from your website code. Uh, data prote protection, I'm going to leave everything the same. We're ready to create. So it's just checking everything right now. While that creates, let's let the create page come up. All right, so now I'm going to go back, and we're going to add Cosmos, and we're going to look at the gotchas there and make sure we're good. So you got a couple of options here, and we're going to do the SQL because we have the SQL code. Um, if you're porting from Mongo, they got a great option there. I actually use that one uh, for a project where I have my local development environment running Mongo and my uh, and my deployment running Azure. So there are some options here for you, and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in our conference DB. I'm going to call this. Uh, we'll just call this conf example provisions throughput versus serverless this is where it burned me because i was on provisioned and 10,000 rus 
uh, which fortunately is not the default anymore, so a little less likely to hit it. But serverless for a, for my blog is what's most cost effective because I have very very low usage, so I don't need provision throughput. And so I'm going to switch it over to serverless. I am going to put it in the same region that uh, that the rest of my stuff is in. Now, one thing to notice when you're pricing this stuff out, go to the cost calculator and look at your features and the regions because not all regions are equal on price. And so look for the region that has the features you want that's most cost effective for you. So we're going to create that. Um, I'm going to, before I create, let's go to networking. I'm going to enable it on all networks because we did, I did not set up a private network for this resource group, but I recommend you do not put it on a public network that you put it on a private network and you have a virtual network configured. So let's go ahead. I'm going to back up policy. I only want locally redundant. Again, I want to say cost. And we'll just do periodic. Let's review and create. All right, let's fire that up. As soon as we get the screen, we'll go back and we're going to tie in the CDN to our blob storage so that the images will go out over a CDN. So let's go back home, let's go to the conference, and now I'm going to create, I have to search for this one, so just search for CDN. We're looking for front door, CDN profiles. So we're going to create that, and uh, we just want the default offering. I don't need, uh, you know, we can go to the classic stuff, but I, I don't need it for what, what I'm doing and, and uh, for this demo. So we're going to go here, we're going to be in that resource group, it's global, so it won't have you pick a spot. And we're just going to call this uh, uh, Cosmos example, endpoint Cosmos example. And it kind of gives you a mingled one because I, I think it's because I'm in the uh, uh, my enterprise subscription. For my blog site, I actually did a custom URL on that, which is kind of cool to be able to do. So you can do custom URLs. This is the one that will be static and get you where you want to go. Origin type, we're going to pull it out of Azure Blobs. I want the blob that I just created. We do want it to cache. I want it to ignore query strings. And uh, I'm not going to worry about compression. We're not going to set up a web application firewall. And so we're ready to create that. And what's going to happen here is the CDN will pull uh your blob storage when you set when you set up you, you go to your endpoint it has an endpoint in there and you just set it up and you tell it this is the endpoint that i'm pulling from and so and so that's all set up for you and um and that's kind of where where we're at um you just uh can come in here you can set up your private endpoint connections you can get into you already have your blog set up and uh you're, you're really ready to go so that's the that's how you go into Azure, kind of look at what you're doing, crank down a few knobs for for your blog site, and crank them back up if you end up with the most popular blog in the world. And uh, if you've got the most popular blog, then you're probably making enough money on advertising to crank those settings up a little bit. So um, with that, I just want to thank you for for uh, taking your time to listen to this. And I hope it was helpful for an introduction to Azure uh, Cosmos DB and working with it in SQL and in, uh, in .NET. And again, go to scrumfish.com if you want to contact me. There's a contact page. And please hit my blog. You can. There's a six-part series on how I wrote all that code from the UI on down. Plus, there's an additional blog on how I turned all that code into React server-side rendering for search engine optimization and better previewing on sites. So thank you very much and enjoy the conference.